have a very long day of canning ahead of me today. I'm gonna try and get most, if not all, of my dried beans canned. And this year I grew black beans, red kidney beans, and great northern beans. So I've had the um, black beans and red beans soaking overnight. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get to the great northerns today, so I did not soak them yet. We'll just see how the day goes. But before I start, I'm going to make myself some lemon water, which I just did a video on this recently. I'll post a link to it down in the description box if you're wondering what I'm doing, but these are freeze dried lemons and I'm just gonna drop a couple of my water and then reseal the uh, jar with the vacuum sealer. Now I'm just getting all of my jars into my portable dishwasher in the basement. I store my jars in the basement and they can get kind of dusty sometimes. So I do put them in here to wash them before I can with them, but I don't use any soap. I just let the hot water from the dishwasher sterilize them and it has a sterilizing setting on there. So I just use that, but it does get the jars clean and um, the benefit is then the jars are also preheated because they will be warm at the end. I do the high heat dry setting and that way the jars are preheated when I'm loading the uh, boiling water into them for canning later on. I was able to fit 65 pint jars in here. I think that is the maximum. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many I'm gonna need, but I think between my bigger canner and my smaller pressure canner, I believe the big one can hold like 32 or maybe 34, I can't remember, um, pint jars, and the smaller one can only hold 20. So that dishwasher load is more than I can do in one batch with the two canners anyway, so that should be enough for now. Um, next, we're just gonna check on these beans. So they've been soaking overnight and they have absorbed a lot of water. So that's good, they are rehydrated. So the next step is to drain these, rinse them, do one last check to see if there are any beans that are like not good quality in there. And then they need to boil for about 30 minutes in fresh water. Um, and then they'll be ready to can. So I'm gonna do that before I start the dishwasher since my dishwasher plugs into the sink. I'm also going to get the lids washed and ready to go before I plug the dishwasher into the sink just so I don't have to go upstairs to do that later. Oh, and total side note, it is not 152. We had a power outage the other day and I never reset this clock. It's actually like, I don't know, nine or 10 in the morning. So anyways, I'll fix that too. the beans completely covered in water with a bunch of water on top of them as well. Um, those little white things are just starch from the beans. That's no big deal. Don't worry about those. But um, you definitely want to put a lot more water than you have beans in here because they will expand as they're cooking and they will absorb a lot of that water. So um, 
These need to cook for about 30 minutes. Well, they need to boil for 30 minutes. So you bring them to a boil, um, boil them for 30 minutes, and then they're ready to can. Um, you do want to use fresh water, I believe. Let me double check that, hold on. Okay, I double checked the canning instructions and although it does say you need to put fresh water in here with the beans when you start boiling them, it does not say that you need to change the water again when you start filling the jars with boiling water. So I believe it's fine to just use the water that the beans are boiling in. And in that case, I'm gonna fill this a little bit more full because I am very limited on stove space and don't mind the stains guys, like priorities, this is a basement kitchen and <laughs> it's a long story, but life's been uh, crazy and this has not been a priority. So ignore the stains on my basement stove and just go about your business. Anyways, my stove space is very limited down here because it's kind of a smaller stove and my canning pots are so big that you can't really fit two pots side by side, like either you know, one in the front, one in the back, they don't fit. I can't even fit this pot behind this one right now. So I'm gonna have to do my beans one at a time. I was hoping to do the red kidney beans at the same time as the black beans, but it looks like I'm gonna have to just do all the black beans first and then go back to get the other ones. So I'm gonna set the red beans aside for now and I'm gonna get some water into my larger canner and get that on the stove so it can start heating up. And this is gonna take a while to boil because that's full of cold water. So that's, that's probably gonna take an hour or so to come to a boil and then has to boil for a half hour. Um, so yeah, totally lost my train of thought. What the heck was I talking about? Yeah, okay, so gonna move that pot, <laughs> gonna get that boiling, putting more cold water in that first so I have enough to fill the jars, getting my big canner here. And then once I get the big canner full, I will get out the second canner, move this off the stove, see what I have to do from there, you know. <laughs> it's like a big game of Tetris, trying to work in a small kitchen when you're canning with extremely large pots. So anyway, I'm gonna get started because I already forgot what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> I'll be back. All right, I am still waiting for the black beans to come up to a boil. They're starting to get close, but not quite there yet. Once they start boiling, I'll set a timer for 30 minutes and then I'll be ready to load them into the jars. The uh, big canner is full. Uh, well, not full, but you know, has enough water in the bottom that it's ready to go. I haven't turned this heat on yet. I'm gonna wait until the beans start boiling and then I'll start bringing this up to temperature. I have my lids all washed, they're ready to go. And the mason jars are in the dishwasher, plugged into the sink, running as we speak. So everything is set to go. And while I have a little time while I'm waiting on these beans, I'm actually just gonna edit a different video that I've been working on for YouTube. So I'll check back with you in a little bit. Well, after what seemed like an eternity, the beans are finally done cooking, so I am going to start getting them into jars. The dishwasher just stopped running, so the jars are nice and hot. And if you want more details about all the different, <laughs> sorry, steam bath, hello. Um, let me close that for a second. If you want more details about um, all the different steps of the process, I will post a link in the description box down below to um, a video that I did previously about canning chicken and in that video I go step by step every single detail from start to finish of how to go through the process of pressure canning. So if you want more details on what you're getting here, check out that video as well. But anyways, all right, so I'm gonna try not to uh, steam myself too badly here. Whew, that's kind of nice, like a facial, you know, steam coming out of the dishwasher. So, oops, oh geez. Such a professional. Okay, let's start with about six jars and keep the rest of these warm in the meantime. This is the beauty of a portable dishwasher in the basement. It works as a portable island, so that's great. All right, I'm going to get my wide mouth funnel in there. Now, up until this point, I haven't added any salt to these beans, so I'm gonna add it in the jars when I do that. And here we go. We have beans in boiling water right there. Oh, I guess I'm probably going to need some lids for the mason jars. Okay, there we go. 
sorry if that was like way too close up on my face right there. Apologize. All right, let's get a little closer. Now with dried beans, when you're canning these, you don't want to fill the beans all the way up to the top because they're still going to continue to absorb water as they cook. They're going to plump up and get bigger. So you want to leave enough room to have some excess water in the jar when you are loading them. That way it doesn't like burst or, you know, crazy things. But for these kind of beans, you're supposed to leave one inch headspace in the jar. And that means that you want to fill it to about the bottom of this rim right here. That's about one inch. So I'm going to ladle these in. I should probably have a slotted spoon for this. Give me one second. That'll make life easier. the beans to like just below the shoulders of the jar like I think that's probably good and then I'll fill the rest with water I'm just gonna do these two to show you it's really good for beans get some water in there I don't worry I just cleaned this it's good <laughs> Now, I don't have enough room on my stove to have a separate pot of water boiling, so I'm just using the water that the beans were boiling in. It's not gonna hurt anything, it's just that, if, I don't know if you can see from there, but the water is black <laughs> from the black beans. It doesn't make any difference in quality or nutrition, it's just not gonna look as pretty in the jar, maybe. Depending on what you think pretty is, who knows, maybe you like black liquid in your jars. And whenever I go to eat these, I do rinse the beans anyway. So even if the water is a little bit more starchy than it would be if I started with fresh water, it's gonna get rinsed off, so it doesn't matter. All right, let's stop there. I'm gonna remember to add my salt in. For a pint-sized jar, which is what I'm using, you need a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. And make sure you use canning salt. Only canning salt because other salt has extra additives put in and canning salt is best. So good. There's like a bunch of like big chunks in here because it's kind of old and it yeah. Take your whatever this is called, I don't know, little plastic thing, and you're going to stick it in there and go around the edges, kind of wiggle things around, make sure you don't have any air bubbles trapped in the bottom. You want those to all be released. I'm gonna do that in both of these. And then after you do that, you always want to double check the level of your water to make sure it's at the right height because sometimes if you have air bubbles that come out, the water level will lower. So I'm gonna double check. They're probably close enough, but I'm just gonna give a tiny bit more water. It is a little weird that this water is like murky black, but whatever. Like I said, it doesn't affect the quality or the safety. It's just like food coloring. All right, so now, I'm totally unprepared because normally I have this ready ahead of time. Here we go. I'm gonna get a rag. I'm gonna wet one side of it, or if you're doing a lot, I'm unprepared. I should have had my other rag ready. You can have one wet, one dry, whatever. But right now I'm just gonna wet one side of the rag, keep the other side dry. You're gonna use the wet side of the rag to wipe the rim. And 
then you're gonna go back over it with the dry side to make sure it's nice and clean. This is a really, really important step that you don't wanna skip because if there's any substance on the rim of this jar, it is not gonna seal properly and you will have wasted a whole lot of time and effort on food that's gonna spoil or that you're gonna have to just put in the refrigerator if it doesn't seal and use it right away. So make sure that is super, super clean. All right, that's good. I'm gonna grab a couple of my, ah, a couple of these. These are the two piece lids. So there is, the one piece goes on first and the rim goes around it. Now you wanna do this fingertip tight. So don't grab it with your whole hand and crank it down, that's too tight. You need it to be tight, but not super tight. So they say just use your fingertips and screw it on and that should be the right tightness because um, you do want the air to be able to release as it's cooking. And without creating that vacuum, it's not gonna seal properly. So you have to make sure it's not too tight for the air to release. All right, so those two are done, and now I probably just have, I don't know how many more to go, 50, who knows. So I'm not gonna film it all, but you get the idea. These are gonna go in the canner. And like I said, if you wanna see more details about how to use this canner, check out my video on how to can chicken. I go through every single detail step by step. Okay, the black beans are in the big canner. I think it was about 19 jars that it ended up being. Um, and I'll, I'll try and like look back at my records and figure out how much I planted, how many pounds I got, and just let you guys know in case you're planning on gardening, growing your own, you'll know how many to plant for this type of yield. But anyways, I have those in the canner. I'm still waiting for that to start steaming. And like I said, um, you can check out the canning chicken video to get all the details about what you have to do with that canner. But um, I also started the red beans. I have to wait for these to come to a boil and then boil those for 30 minutes and then I'm going to get them loaded into my smaller canner, which is currently over there. Don't mind the mess. Um, but I'm also starving. So, oh, one side note. Okay. So one thing, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you even can your beans? Why do you go to the trouble of canning them? Because they're perfectly shelf stable as is, which is absolutely true. They are. You could, I had my other beans just like this in a big gallon jug and they're totally fine storing on the shelf that way. The reason I can them is because if I don't can them, I'll never use them. And I know that about myself because I'm not gonna choose something for dinner that's gonna take me like four hours to cook. So I can them for the purposes of meal prep, basically. So having it already cooked in a can, portioned out, ready to go, just dump it straight into our chili and I'm done. That, that's why I can them. So we use them like the black beans we'll use in tacos or Mexican dishes. And then the red beans we'll use in our chili and things like that. So it's just so easy and convenient and fast to just grab a jar, pop it open, dump the beans in. And I don't have to spend hours and hours boiling them or remember to soak them overnight the night before. So that is why I can them. But anyways, back to lunch. So I, I'm in the process of making another video about my new meal plan, which I will probably have that one posted before you see this one. So if that is the case, I'm going to uh, put a link to that video in the description box for you so you can see why I'm eating this way and um, a bunch of other recipes that coincide with this meal plan. But I'm, for medical reasons, eating low carb, low sugar, and lots and lots of vegetables and protein. So my lunch that I got ready before I came down here, hang on, I'm gonna put you on the stand, hang on. All right, that's better. I needed two hands to show you. So um, this is a little salad I put together upstairs. Um, it has kale, quinoa, blueberries, and strawberries in it. And I made a homemade dressing with organic extra virgin olive oil and some raw apple cider vinegar. Um, those are all things I'm allowed to have on my diet and I am uh, also going to throw some canned chicken in here just from 
the last batch of chickens that we had because I'm starving and I think I need more protein than just the quinoa in the salad. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. So, oops, making a mess. Yeah. So I'm going to just pick some chicken out of here and throw it in there as well. And that is the wonderful thing about canning your meat is just like the beans, it's ready to go. You open up the jar and you have instant meal. You can um, take this straight out of the jar, mix it with mayonnaise, make a chicken salad. Um, you can throw it into just a green salad like I'm doing here. One of the fastest meals you can throw together with this canned chicken, it literally takes, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds is um, I'll just dump it in a pot, not a pot, like dump it in a saucepan with a little bit of olive oil and sprinkle curry powder on it. And that's it, like curry chicken, instant, done. That's all you need. So it's literally 30 seconds. You basically just stir it for 30 seconds to heat it up and you're done. So I love this canned chicken. And now that I have to eat such high protein, low carb meals, I am probably gonna order a lot more meat birds than I planned on ordering <laughs> for this coming spring. But anyways, this is lunch, so I'm gonna eat and keep an eye on my canner and my beans, and I'll see you in a little bit. Well, I got to the end of my salad and I was still hungry, so I went upstairs and grabbed a hard boiled egg and threw that in there. So uh, if you're making the salad, you might need to add some extra stuff to fill you up. That is all. I ran out of time to can my great northern beans, but I'll do that on another day. So project for another time. It's the day after canning and I ended up with, let's see, one, two, three, four times five, 20. So 24 jars of black beans and I had nine jars of red kidney beans. There was one that didn't seal for some reason, which is very, very odd for me. They usually all seal. But when I did uh, look under, I think there was some sticky stuff on the lid. So I guess I didn't wipe the room well enough on that one. But that one's in the fridge. And so I have eight more red kidney bean jars. And now I need to move all these to the other room so I can start washing eggs to get my eggs ready for the week. So anyways, that was canning time. And I will um, put down in the description box the uh, number of seeds I planted versus the harvest that I got. Just so you guys can kind of gauge if you wanted to try and grow beans for yourselves. That'll give you an idea of how many to plant um, to give yourselves a harvest that you're hoping for. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll check you out in the next one. Bye-bye.